The South Bank Show, in association with Anderson Consulting. Hello, Blur are generally held to be the most original and successful British band of the 1990s. Formed in 1989 by Damon Albarn and Graham Coxon and Dave Rowntree, all from Colchester, and Alex James from Bournemouth, they had their first top ten hit with There's No Other Way in 1991. But it was with the release of their third album, Park Life, that they achieved national fame. The album sold over five million copies worldwide and Britpop was truly born. Despite an overhyped public rivalry with the band Oasis and constant rumours of breakup, they've successfully reinvented themselves throughout the decade and now celebrate their 10th anniversary as Britain's foremost indie band. Jerry Fox's film follows them from recording studios to a one-off gig at Goldsmiths College to mark this occasion. I remember watching the South Bank show on the Smiths round at Graham's house and then Morrissey said something at the end, he said that the Smiths were the last important band and I just got so pissed off with that and I walked all the way home just sort of determined to uh, prove him wrong. <laughs> it's really pathetic, isn't it? I also had a little fantasy that if I ever got on the South Bank show, I'd say the same thing as him. Now the moment has arisen, I, I just can't bring myself to be that sort of a, uh, I don't know, petty really. <laughs> Of course we survive, we're very resilient like anybody else. We're not daft enough to self-destruct. I think we know that music isn't everything and it's not worth dying for. Because I have a, have a shit going on. <laughs> it's a lot more worthy of attention. We're all much too proud to admit that we rely on each other, but we do. It's got more to do with working hard than being a genius. It's the thing that gets me. I thought you just had to be a genius. We can all do good stuff on our own. It takes the four of us together to, to be this good. You know, we all need each other. Which is probably why we all hate each other as well, you know. <laughs> about Britain in the mid-90s, from Cool Britannia to the Spice Girls, the Oasis Blur feud, if not caused by Park Life, certainly Park Life is absolutely integral and Blur were absolutely integral in that process. Also, they've just made, pound for pound, the best British pop records of the 90s. <laughs> I've just realised, even though I haven't been on this train for maybe two years or something, that I know every single detail of this track. Could almost could I kind of give you a commentary of it uh, with my eyes closed all the way up to Colchester.
I'd spent a lot of time on this train. Thank you. And saw how it wore people down, made people very tense, and how miserable it seemed to make people. You know, there is something sad about leaving your family and getting on a train and travelling 100 miles every day. Just for, for what? Just to sort of put bread on the table. And the way that everyone's sort of forced to wear suits, forced to conform. An old same, same train, same station, sat in the same seat, the same nasty stain, next to same old what's his name. On his way to the same place, the same name. It breaks the human spirit. I think that's probably why. It's quite an attractive subject for a songwriter because, uh, you know, it's quite emotional. I find it emotional. Well, we're, we're at Stanway School. This is where Graham and I went to school. our first ever performance, if you could call it that, at 8.30 in the morning for, for an assembly for the fourth and fifth years. Uh, I think I was playing uh, the, the piano, and I think we did a Jam Jimi Hendrix song. Oh, you are so very strange, sometimes I think you've gone insane, but you can do myself a two love, very kind, and I'd like to see just how it's taken to the teach you, and it's you to your pretty hair, pretty hair. failed A-level music in this room. I remember the moment when I realised I just didn't know what I was talking about. This is the place I feel most comfortable. I don't really relate to any of the rest of the school. That's why more money should be put into schools like this, because they haven't got any money. You can see they've got no money. They didn't have any money when I was there. You know, that's why I, and I always found it uh, a bit difficult to stomach being accused of, of going to public school. Uh, I've got to introduce this because this is like an old friend. This is I spent more time in, in, in this porter cabin than anywhere else in this school. This is where we used to rehearse, spend all my time in here, really. When I go in there, I don't really want to stay anymore. I've had enough of it. It's all right for half an hour, no? to just sit in the porter cabins and tinkle about. He used to write stuff that I'd play to on sax and we listened to whatever the music rooms had records. We listened to Threepenny Opera and Tommy, I think. This piece was written as part of a competition at school. I think I was about 15. And it was meant to be a sort of exercise of our knowledge of sort of more of that theoretical side of music. And it was called something like Sonata. I'm a little bit loath to call it anything now because um, now when you're young you don't mind being really pretentious. But it gets a little bit embarrassing as you get older. So I think I'll call it something else. 